Welcome back to the channel. We're in the final phase of our heater core install. In the last video, we rebuilt the heater box, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to put it all back together. Just a quick review, this box has been completely rebuilt. All of the internals were sanded, primed, painted. New foam was installed everywhere that foam is supposed to be, so this box will be nicely sealed up and won't have any wind noise flowing through it when we're driving. Um, the um, motor has a new seal around it for the firewall, and there's a new seal on the motor itself to the, um, to the motor plate. Um, I've got the extended tube style heater core installed, and I have put these sleeves on the tubes so that the tubes are protected from vibration and metal to metal wear. Um, also these sleeves will seal to the firewall and prevent unwanted fumes and smells from coming into the interior. All of our controls work nice and smoothly as they're supposed to. And um, with that, let's get this thing installed. Okay, so I've got the heater box here in the interior of the car on the floorboard, and I'm gonna install it now. This is a really straightforward process, um, especially with these longer tubes. If you use a heater core that has the original style short tubes, you need to put on your heater hoses right now. This is the point where you put the heater hoses on right now. Because once you install the heater box assembly, you cannot get to the clamps to tighten the hose clamps and you'll have to take the box back out. So. Do yourself a favor, if you're using a stock short tube style heater core, right now, before you install the box, put your heater hoses on and feed them through the holes in the firewall, okay? Now, because I don't have to do that on this car with these longer tubes, I can install this box, and this is actually gonna make this a very quick and very easy install. Um, rotate the box into position. And then have the screw that goes into the cowl through the um, front bracket ready to go. You're going to fit the blower motor through the blower motor hole and line up the four bolts from the blower motor to the hole. That will support the back side of the heater core as well as the, the, the new heater core tubes. Make sure you get your electrical wires through the hole. Just watch to line up your heater tubes to the appropriate holes. Pull your antenna wire out of the way if you have one. Make sure you don't catch any wiring for your interior light. in through the glove box and you just heard it engage the firewall right there. Okay, so grab the screw that goes in this front bracket and just thread it in by hand. And once it's started, it'll honestly support this pretty well. Okay, with everything I need here, we can just simply tighten this screw up by hand. Keep in mind, this is an old car, this is an old box. Certain things like these interior components, like the heater box, they don't need to be much more than hand tight. Don't get crazy cranking things down. Okay, so 
we've got our control cables and we need to route those to the top of the heater box. And a lot of guys will recommend, oh, mark your heater control cables. There's no need to mark your heater control cables. They're only gonna go in one place. The longest one goes here to the front and the shorter one goes here to the back, okay? Um, your brackets, make sure you have your screws for your brackets and just slip the bracket into the notch and then put the screw in by hand. Okay, you can do the same thing on the rear one. Now this is where those of you with big hands like me, I hope you're ambidextrous because you'll need to use your left hand to get this rear bracket in. And just reach in there. Once you get the tab engaged, you can put the screw in your socket, use a long nut driver, And this clamp is just holding the sheath of the cable locked in place. Don't get crazy over tightening them, it's not necessary. So you're just holding the, the cable sheath in place so that it doesn't move when you move the lever to control the blend doors. Okay. When we installed this, I had this little metal hat and I pulled this off. I'm gonna reinstall this. And that might take a little bit of doing. Not really, went right on. Okay, so that's basically the primary install of, of your heater box into the car. Hook up your blower motor. Let's see, that's the emergency flasher wiring. Here's your pigtail for your um, blower resistor. Bring that over, make sure you plug that on or your blower motor won't work. This yellow wire goes to the bottom of the blower resistor. Go ahead and make sure that's connected. You're gonna to need to have this ready to go when you put the glove box back in. Grab your glove box. Now these things can be a bit of a challenge to put in and this box is a very old glove box. Um, I don't think this is an original, but um, yeah, based on this hole here on the top, I don't think this is an original. So you basically have to fold the glove box to be able to get it in. And these fold lines are here on the box. To allow you to get it into the cavity. When you go to do this side, you just kind of pinch it.
Now your glove box needs to go back far enough that you can slip it around all the sheet metal on the opening. And then you want to find this plug and just reach over the top and run it through the hole. Okay. You're going to need a short screwdriver. And with a short screwdriver, you line up some of these holes. You want to start with ones you can see. So I've got that one lined up. And there's little pieces of metal in the cardboard that these screws go into and engage. And that's what holds your glove box in. So once you've got it started, you tighten it up. I generally try and get stuff in the center. It helps align things. And then if you can get your fingers underneath the box to support the cardboard, you can run the screws in. Just like that. So I'm using my super speed here to install all the remaining glove box screws and then I'll connect the emergency flasher light and put those screws in. Don't over tighten them. Hang the glove box door. Um, before you tighten it up, check and make sure that it doesn't interfere with the dash pad. So I've tightened everything up. The glove box is reinstalled. I can put all of my junk back in it, and when I close the door, I have this very unique signature from Carol Shelby. This signature was done at SAC 17 in Portland, Oregon in 1992. The standard white paint marker that Shelby used to sign all of the dashes and glove boxes and various pieces that um, he signed had dried up. And this was the only marker that he had to, available to sign. So this particular car has a very unusual signature. And I'll put up the picture here to show me standing in front of Shelby getting this signed as a goofy 17 year old. We do need to reinstall the heater control plenum. And that just goes, slides right back here. Like so. Hoses simply go on top of it. We do have a control cable that we need to install next to the gas pedal. So we'll slip that cable onto the shaft, line up the cable. Put our clamp on.
This one wants to be stubborn. Tighten this up. The upper screw holes in the pa paper plenum are actually damaged and there's no putting screws in them. I'll pull the box back at a later date and install a new plenum. For now, I'll keep the screw in the glove box. Okay, the final step of our heater core install is to install our new hoses. And just like the radiator hoses for this car, I have a silicone hose kit for the hoses. And start by slipping the lower hose on. Put your clamps on in a way that they'll be accessible. And just Light it on. Wrap your upper hose, put your clamp on, and make sure that your hose clamps are accessible. As long as they're accessible, you'll have no issue. Slip the heater hoses onto the tubes that are now coming through the firewall. The hose going to the lower tube gets routed to the heater hose fitting on the intake manifold, and the hose going to the upper tube gets routed to the water pump. Get them routed in place in preparation for trimming them to length. I am not a big fan of cutting these things too short, so in order to not have that happen, don't cut it until you've got it installed on the heater core end, and if you have the short style heater hose or heater core connections and you routed the hoses through the firewall, um, you should be using long enough lengths of hose to get past your connections at the engine. So go about an inch past the connector. And then I use a PVC pipe cutter. and it makes a perfect cut. Okay, so I'm gonna install the heater hose assembly. Uh, I'm calling it an assembly because what I've done is I've trimmed the heater hoses to length and I've got some zip ties on here to hold them in the position that I want them in. Um, so these are just gonna run right along the top of the, the intake. Now, the shorter hose obviously goes to the intake manifold connection right here, and our longer hose goes to the water pump. Now, when we connect these, the shorter hose or the hose from the intake manifold needs to go to the bottom port on the heater core. The upper hose goes to the water pump because that feeds to the inlet side of the water pump. That means if there's any air trapped in the heater core, the water pump is gonna pull that air out of the heater core assembly so that all you have in there is coolant. And that would be the reason for routing the hoses the way they're routed from the factory is basically to make sure that the water pump is doing its best job to pull any air out of the um, the heater core assembly and um, it should work really well that way. Okay and at this point all of our hoses are clamped everything's snugged up not overly tight 
We've got our upper radiator hoses done, lower radiator hose, our bypass. We have our manifold routed to the lower heater, or heater core port and the upper heater core port routed back to the inlet side of the water pump right there. So that's our, our proper hose routing. And uh, that basically wraps up our cooling system routing. And at this point, the cooling system on this car is sealed up completely and it's ready to have fluid added. So that wraps up the installation of the rebuilt heater box with the new extended tube heater core in it and the installation of the new silicone heater hoses. Uh, I hope that some of the tips that I've shown you, like how to cut hoses and get nice straight cuts, and how to get that heater box in and out of the dash with relative ease, inspires you to tackle this yourself if you need to do a heater core, or if you just need to replace your heater hoses. Um, in either case, these are jobs that are well within any amateur mechanics abilities. These are not difficult jobs. Um, I would be happy to help with additional suggestions or tips if you find yourself getting ready to do this job and you're still feeling a little unconfident in your abilities. Um, by all means, please reach out to me. Uh, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. The links are below in the description. And for more information like this, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. Let me know that this was helpful to you. I really appreciate that. And with that, I thank you for watching and I hope you'll join me for my next video.